Right. Let's go ahead and create our first journal in Oracle. So the way we're going to do that is that we're going to hit that navigator button, which looks like this guy here. And then we're going to scroll all the way down to general accounting. And this time we're going to click on journals. Right. So we see that same section that we just discussed. And this time what we're going to do is hit this little task icon right here. This task icon, once you open it, it shows you all of the functions that are available to you in GL. And we're going to choose create journal. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and enter some journal header information. And I am going to ref ask you to refer to your organization's buddy course for your naming conventions for journal batch. I am going actually going to leave the journal batch blank because I'm going to let Oracle create that for me. But if your organization has naming conventions for your journal batches, which they likely do, please adhere to those same naming conventions. Okay, great. So same thing with the description. Um, it's obviously going to be something to that describes your whole entire batch. And uh, we're going to leave the accounting period at March. Okay, this is a manual source, which means that we're creating, we're manually creating a journal entry in the GL. Okay, let's now create our journal name. So uh, this is gonna be our revenue accrual, let's say. And I'm just gonna tack on my initials. And the description, I am actually gonna just put in the same, the description field is optional. Um, what I'd like you to, to note about this is that whatever you put in the journal description, well, it's actually gonna default onto each journal line. But like I said, it is up to you whether or not you wanna change it. You also, later on when you create your journal lines, have the option to make notes on each very line as you go through. The ledger, you're going to leave the ledger defaulted because that is primarily what you would have access to. Unless you have um, access to different ledgers, then you would change it, but I would leave it mostly defaulted. And accounting date, again, is going to default to the current date. And what it does is it actually gives you a note to even if you were going to change the accounting date, you should make sure that it is in the correct accounting period, which was in the journal header. So I'm actually just going to leave this at defaulted. Now category is what type of journal entry uh, you're creating, right? So category for my purposes, it's going to be an accrual, but it could also be a payment. It could be any sort of other manual journal entry. It can be a receipt, all kinds of things like that. And so if I were to start to type in the word accrual, as you can see, it dynamically finds all of the different categories of journal entries for me. So I'm simply going to select accrual. And I'm not sure if you're noticing this, but as I move through the fields, I'm actually using my tab key on my keyboard to move through the fields. And that just makes things a little bit faster if, you, uh, if, if you're a keyboard kind of person. Currency is going to default in the currency that your operation uses, okay? So chances are you're gonna leave this as defaulted unless you're entering a foreign, currency journal entry perhaps then you might change the currency here if you do then what happens is that it'll default in the conversion date the conversion rate type and the inverse it'll actually calculate the inverse conversion rate but because I am actually operating in a USD ledger and my journal entries in USD there isn't really any other conversion that I need to worry about at this point point. and then uh, let's go ahead and enter some journal lines once I click into uh, the first line here I see that I've got a blank and if you just resize this over to the right, this is the little icon that you're looking for. Okay, and this icon will help you select the GL code combinations in which to uh, create your entry. So simply click on that and you have several different choices here. You can either select something that is pre created for you as an alias. If I were to hit this drop down, I see that there's all sorts of different code combinations that have already been created for me. Perhaps these are combinations that we frequently use to enter manual entries. 
I'm actually going to leave that blank and then simply enter the account. And so what I can do is I can actually hit this drop down. I'm going to type in revenue and hit search. All right, here is the account that I'm going to use, our revenue clearing account. So I'm going to double click on that to select it. All right, great. And so once I hit OK, it's going to populate the account line. And that is, that's all I need to do to put it in. Now let's go ahead and put in our debit amount, which in this case will be $1,000. And I'm obviously going to be leaving the credit blank because that's going to be the next line. Now it pops me over to the additional information tab. I can actually leave this blank or I can perhaps put a note if I needed to for that particular line. Let's enter our credit line now. So again, I'm going to click on the credit line and go into the lists of values. Okay, so once again, I'm going to go back into the drop down. And I'm going to search for my desired revenue account. And so this time what I'm going to do is simply put in the value of four and hit search. It brings me back all of the accounts that start with four. I'm going to choose revenue domestic and hit OK. OK, and it populates my account segment screen. I'm going to hit OK. And again, I've created my GL code combination. Now let's put in the balancing value of 1000. And again, it prompts me to put in additional information if I tab. So I'm just going to leave that blank. Okay. And then I am going to save. Okay, so as you can see, once I have saved it, it gives me a last saved date over here, which is cool. And then look what happened, you guys. It created a journal batch name for me and it called itself the same name as my journal, uh, en journal entry with the date and time on it. Okay, so the very next thing I need to do is simply click complete. And as you can see, my completion status is complete. And the only thing that I need to do now in order to finalize this journal entry is post it.